judges, not legislators. In fact, the Supreme Court had to change the abortion laws in 48 states, 48 states, in order, when they struck down the anti-abortion laws to achieve its will. In that, I want to read to you this uh, decision that the Supreme Court issued in 1892, just 127 years ago. No purpose of action against religion can be imputed to any legislation, state or nation, because this is a religious people, this is a Christian nation. The court provided over 80 different historical precedents, precedents when they made that decision. Fast forward to 1962. The Supreme Court first nationally implemented the agenda of public secularism when for the first time in American history, it ordered the separation of religious principles from education, ruling that from this day forward, it would be unconstitutional for a student to even pray voluntarily at school. No historical precedents were offered. Then in 1965, the court permitted prayers if they were silent. But in 1985, the Supreme Court ruled that even silent prayer was unconstitutional. I've often wondered how they could tell what somebody was praying silent prayer. And then the court broadened its prohibition to include Bible reading in school. And that's kind of ironic considering the fact that Congress printed the first English translation Bible to be used in public schools. How did they arrive at all this? They used the testimony of a psychologist who stated that the reading of the Bible in school could have harmful psychological effects on a child. So now we have a super school board of education for every school in the nation. 1980, the Supreme Court ruled that allowing students to see a passive copy of the Ten Commandments at school was unconstitutional. This is their decision. If the posted copies of the Ten Commandments are to have any effect at all, it will be to induce the school children to read, meditate upon, perhaps to venerate, and obey the commandments. This is not a permissible state of justice. Now, isn't that amazing logic? Students can't see the Ten Commandments even if they want to, for fear that they might obey religious teachings such as don't kill, don't steal, obey your father and your mother. And finally, I want to reach you one more thing. These are all things that are included in your new Constitution of the United States of America. This is a 22 word prayer that caused voluntary prayer to be taken out of public school. We acknowledge our dependence, Almighty God. The end, we beg God blessings of our parents, our teachers, and our country. That simple prayer got voluntary prayer taken out of public school. The same number of times that the Pledge of Allegiance uses the name God are in here. One fourth of the time it's used in the Declaration of Independence. Now, those words in the Declaration that say that we are all created equal and we are all endowed with certain inalienable rights. And that to secure those rights, or to protect those rights, government is instituted among men. You know what that tells me about our government? That first and foremost, the purpose of the federal government is to protect our inalienable rights, our God-given rights. That's their first objective. That's what they should be doing. They shouldn't be in the public school system. And yet, they tell me if you'll just follow the, the Declaration of Independence, I mean the Constitution, everything will be fine. 2,700 pages. There has been a continual degradation of the Constitution for the last 100 years. I don't think there's any question we have now control of federal government. 65% of all state budgets are controlled by the federal government. If you walk out on the streets today and you ask the average person, do you think our federal government is too big, too powerful, too involved in our lives? 90% of them are going to say yes. And the other 10% are going to say I don't know. And yet the founders gave us a way. They gave us an option to fix this. And I'm sure if they could be here today, they would be asking us, why aren't you using it? Well, these two gentlemen here, I want to introduce 
Senator Tom Cobra. Senator Cobra, if you want. So, if both of you would please introduce yourself. 